where we left off, we had just used Edit Puppet Warp, and I had just uh, locked in with some pins the base. And that allows me to then start moving the leaves a little bit. So I'm just going to move the top a little bit, just like that. And then hit Return. And I can see the difference between them just by turning them on and off. So it's just a tiny movement. See that? Just the littlest bit. For now, I can turn effects off if I want. Those effects will always be there to turn on. But even before I continue, I'm going to go back to my first frame because you really, this is why we set it up this way. You really want to think in terms of kind of building quality in the whole time. So try different versions at first. So I might flip this horizontal just to see if I like that better, and I don't. So I think I'm good. All right, so I'm going to turn off frame one. And now I have the beginning of an animation, what's called a motion cycle for my second frame. And the reason I need a motion cycle for this is because I'm not just showing the fern again, I'm showing that the fern's starting to move back and forth. So I'm going to create three different frames within this frame for this one keyframe. It will all have the same background. That's the same, that's the same frame that I had before. So I've started moving it with this. Now I'm going to duplicate that again, Command J, and do Edit Puppet Warp. And remember, I need to, on new layers, I need to set the pins again where I don't want it to move. And I have to kind of remember which way I was going with the movement. I moved it a little bit to the left. So now I'm going to move it a little bit more to the left with different leaves. Like the wind's got it, right? The change from this to this. Now I'm going to duplicate it again. Same thing, edit puppet warp. Lock it at the bottom. If I was growing it, I would use scale and I would shift it, you know, however you want to change the asset. We're really making use of the benefits of digital art in being able to make perfect copies. Right? And now I'm going to start moving it back the other way. Because I want it not just to look like it's moving, but like it's rustling a little. And I think that's enough. I, I said three frames. And then I don't need this frame anymore, because that's just a, a repetition. So I could delete it. And then I'm going to turn all those off, save my progress, take my next keyframe sketch. So I'm saving my assets. Remember, I'm not animating anything. I'm just building the things I need. OK, now a mouth starts to appear from it. So I need these two layers, because those are the last two that I'm using. I'm going to hit Command-J, Duplicate, move those down on top of my next, my next frame. Remember, the effect is there to turn on when I'm ready to create the final shot. But now I need to move it again, because if I start moving these, it doesn't make sense for them all of a sudden to stop and then for a mouth to, to pop out. So very quickly, I'm just going to do Edit Puppet Warp. And like I said, there's a lot of repetition in animation. It depends on what you're animating, what your process is. This is a lot about how you'll make creatures move and walk. It's just repeating Puppet Warp. And I move, might move it back a little bit the other direction to get started. And not nothing too huge in terms of the movements. 
And now I need to introduce my creature. So I go back to assignment two and find my PNG of my creature. It's going to be way too big. Actually, it's shrunk within the frame, but the resolution is, is plenty big enough. And for my creature, I might decide like how I want it to look by the end, and I might decide to flip it. And then I might move that down to the panel where it looks like that. And maybe it even has a drop shadow to help set it off. Just like I was playing with the, the effects on the fern. So that kind of gives it a really quick drop shadow underneath. Quick and uh, simple. Going to push that distance down. Yeah, I think it's pretty effective. Okay. So obviously, that's not what I want right now, but what I can do is move that down to the frame where that creature appears, full bodied, and then work backwards. So this frame has the creature, right? So I've changed the direction of it from the sketch, but it's not a big deal. I just like this direction in that scene a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is just move that. It's about organizing your assets on top of that keyframe. Then above that, that creature is kind of spilling out. So I'm going to make a duplicate of it, move it up above that, and show this creature kind of spilling out. In fact, I can just reverse flip uh, my sketches just to, to help me understand it a little bit better. You see? Quick and easy. So now what I need to do, and I'm going to turn the effects off for now. I can always use them later. But by putting them at the beginning, it means every time I duplicate it, it will carry that effect with it, which is helpful. Now I'm going to puppet warp it. And if I want to play with my opacity, I can. And just like with the fern, I'm going to set my anchor points. This time I really want that head to go down. And I really just want to be able to control most of it. Right? So this is the pose for getting spit out of the plant. So I'm maybe going to arch that back. Higher. I think I'll close the mouth. If I want to pivot the paw, I can do that. Tuck the hips up. <laughs> It's like pushing a kitten around, which is what I do on my weekends. So how would I close the mouth? Well, it's because I have the mouth open a little bit. As long as I have an anchor point on both parts, I can shorten the distance between those jaws. So that's a pretty big change. 
from this, right? And I might want to just shrink it by hitting Command T. Why is it saying? And you know what? I'm going to rasterize it just so it's not having to work so hard. Rasterize the layer, but not the layer style. The only one I'm going to keep as a smart object is the first time I brought it in. And I'm just going to shrink it a little bit so it looks like it's coming from something. And I can always rotate it. And I can always just do a simple warp as well. Kind of push it the way I want. I'm not quite getting the arch to the back that I want, but we'll see. Try that again. Shrink it a little bit. And then to get the arch to the back, this is tricky, but puppet warp. And just tug it here. Tighten it up here and kind of squeeze that in. That's looking better. Yeah, so it goes from that now to this. We'll get there. Now I look at my next, I'm working backwards from when my creature fully appears, right? You can flip this horizontal. Then bring a duplicate, Command J, of my creature. There it is. I'm gonna rotate it. And going to puppet warp it. Now, if I wanted to, I could also bring in a separate asset just for my creature's head. I can show you that. Have a little bit more control of it, like of its mouth opening and closing. I could even put in a separate jaw, which could be fun. But all of that can be done as in-betweens too. Now, a lot of this is going to get, like, these back legs are going to get covered by the plant, clearly. And you see what happens here is tricky. When you move something so the pixels touch, then they're always going to warp together because the computer just sees a shape. Okay. Next. I'll flip this. And bring that creature, duplicate it, bring it up. Transform it. Shrink it down a little. And puppet warp. And I gotta get these paws out of there. Move that out of the way and then take the nose and kind of point it up. Give me some movement to the leaves here. All right, next, we're back to where we left off. So working backwards doesn't take too long. It can be the smarter thing to do. It just depends on what you're animating and what assets you've already created. 